actually just had a lab tour uh, at the last EBI, and people were so excited. It's like they found the science again, but yet that's why you came on board. So tell us a little bit about what they saw, but also about why uh, Univira and the science has been so important to you. Well, you know, back in 1997, my, my first meeting with Billy, um, I, I was blown away uh, by, by a couple of things. Number one, his vision uh, to basically save the natural product industry, um, which was to take all the, the, the biomedical technology that I was used to um, and to use that to discover and validate uh, compounds in plants. Uh, to help people achieve and experience and maintain uh, better health. So that had never been done before. I mean, you have to remember back in the, in the 90s, the natural product industry was basically make up a story. And if your story was better than the other guy's story, you sold more products. Um, and everybody was out there making stuff up. And, and, and so here was a man who was willing to, to, to do things the right way, which is, by the way, you know, the thing that I most often hear, especially when I'm talking to audiences where there's a lot of health professionals, um, is, wow, finally, someone's doing it right, which is you do the research, and then you make products based on what you find in the research, <laughs> which is really the way it ought to work. Uh, but the problem, of course, is that research is fabulously expensive. Uh, so, so when I presented him the, the you know, the, the budget, um, and, and I, I I took the number that was in my head and doubled it just to make sure that, that I was talking to somebody who was serious. Um, I said it was going to cost about $100 million. Uh, and he didn't blink. Uh, so that's when I realized I was talking to a very unusual uh, person. To think about, you know, and, and, and I think I've mentioned to you that we spent $25 million before the first product was put into your hands. Um, and, and, and that was just to establish um, the, the, the technology and the, the protocols for taking plants uh, and, and really getting those plants uh, um, to where we could understand exactly what was going on. You can't just take a, you know, walk through the rainforest and take some plant that's been used by some indigenous tribe of, you know, for pain and think that you're going to go to the U.S. market and sell it as an analgesic and everything's going to be hunky-dory. There's a lot of work that has to go in uh, to discovery. And, and, and the work involves all those technologies that you saw in the lab tour. Uh, the HPLC, high pressure liquid chromatography, the LCMS, the liquid mass spectrometer, the gas mass spectrometer, all these technologies that enable us to dereplicate, you know, entire plants so that we understand clearly what each plant does and how it does what it does. And that's the only way, number one, that you can move forward with confidence regarding safety. It's also the only way that you can create a standardized material so that the customer gets the same benefit uh, batch after batch, year after year. So, you know, consistency is important. We've all seen companies come and go. And the reason they come and go is they, they, they might have had a good product, a, a plant-based product that produced good results. Uh, and then, you know, a year later, the customers are not getting the same results because what? The, the, the plants change. <laughs> the plants change according to the water, the wind, the sun, the soil. Um, and if you don't control for those things, if you don't have standardized material, you have no idea what you're selling a year down the road. You know, Stephen, uh, I've often been asked, uh, uh, they'll say, well, what's Stephen's favorite product? So just for a second, what, what is your favorite product? <laughs> it depends, depends what day you ask me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If it's the day after I've been playing bump with my with my teenage boys, um, and it, if those of you who know what bump is, it's an exhausting game. It's like basketball uh, speeded up at to to like twice the speed of basketball. But if if you ask me the day after I've been playing bump with my teenage sons, my favorite product is Regenicare. <laughs> if if you ask me uh, on another day, it's probably going to be Prime, uh, because Prime provides the most comprehensive repair activity uh, in, in the entire body and brain. 
If you look at PRIME, the combination of DHEA, 7-keto DHEA, uh, alpha-lipoic acid, and acetylcysteine, acetyl-L-carnitine, methane, these are all um, anti-aging compounds that work synergistically. So on most days, I'd say PRIME, <laughs> Prime is my favorite product. And, and then again, if you ask me in, you know, in the morning uh, when I'm making my drink with aloe and extra, aloe and extra is my favorite product. <laughs> You know, it's, it's funny, Stephen, uh, I'm broadcasting or we're recording this from uh, the Portland International Airport and you're up in uh, Olympia and uh, technology's really closed down the gap. And I just want to say, uh, I, I know you're uh, going into retirement, but I don't know if you'll ever really retire. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, you've been the icon in Univera for so long and just want to say uh, really a heartfelt, uh, grateful thank you. And I honestly wonder if I'd be alive if I hadn't got uh, off of that thing called Vioxx. And Vioxx uh, got pulled off the market for that very reason. So, and I got into Regenicare and I remember taking that the first time. And I'll tell you something, what a wild product. So, uh, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on this morning. And uh, we just appreciate you a great deal. My pleasure. My pleasure, Al. Thanks for all you do. <laughs> Have a safe travels. <laughs>